Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw uh, iTunes logo or icon in Adobe Photoshop CC. Uh, first, we're going to go to File New and create a 1024768 document. Uh, make sure the background is white and there's no artboard checked. So click Create and then we're gonna drag we're gonna use the same logo I'm gonna drag it and drop it here and maybe make it a little bit larger anytime you wanna change the size of a shape or an image in Adobe Photoshop you better hold on shift and drag the corners because anytime you keep um, uh, pressing shift you're holding the proportions and uh, when you're done you press return or enter and those changes are applied. So now we need to um, analyze the shape and see what's going on and how we can start drawing this. I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to try to analyze this um, from the uh, from the bottom and come up. So we see there's a round or ellipse or circle shape here and then we have another one here we have a third one here and also we have a music note so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw all these shapes one at a time and then when we're done we can also add some effects to it to make it look like uh, a, a iTunes icon I want to pick up the uh, ellipse tool from the toolbar uh, click and drag just gonna I'm not gonna be particular I'm just gonna click and drag a shape here we're gonna modify it in a minute so what, what we can do is to go to the move tool and move it here to the center obviously this is blocking the entire shape so you have two choices you can draw these side by side or you can reduce the opacity of it what I like to do is to put these side by side so you can actually see what's happening and this makes it much much easier but I want to make sure this is somewhat the same size of the iTunes logo and I'm gonna put it here for a minute and press control T or command T for transform modify it a little bit resize it I'm happy with it let's go alright so what we can do here let's zoom in we need to change the stroke color of this one and to, to make sure it matches this the easiest way of doing it is to actually uh, sample it using the eyedropper so we're gonna click on the eyedropper and click here once to sample that gray color now we have it here and uh, if you want you can double click and take a look at it the code for it is DC 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 and if you want to take a look at the RGB colors or hex or CMYK whatever you want whatever however you want to reference it you can memorize any of these colors so we're gonna go back to here to the fill again you can click uh, we're gonna change the stroke color so we're gonna click on the stroke and the color we just sampled is right here is the first color that you see in this color set so we're gonna click there and this is applied uh, we are going to change the stroke here on options bar uh, to something that is a bit smaller and hopefully it matches um, the iTunes logo I'm gonna go down to two points alright I'm happy with that I'm gonna let it go and obviously the fill color is white so we're gonna change this to white okay not a bad start obviously we need another one of these and we need it exactly the same uh, color the same uh, dimensions just a slightly smaller so the easiest way of doing it is to go to layers panel and duplicate this one so we're gonna go to right click on it and then go duplicate layer so we have two of them on top of each other obviously we want this one, the second one, to be 
smaller so we're gonna press control T I'm going to hold shift and alt and grab the corner and drag it inside to make it a little bit smaller there you go and then press enter um, I, I was holding shift in order to keep the proportions intact and hold alt uh, so that when I'm changing the size it changes it from the center of the uh, circle actually as a matter of fact I need to do it again because I need to uh, make it slightly larger so again press control or command T sh hold shift and alt and drag it I'm gonna drag it outward a little bit and press return or enter okay I'm happy with this one um, and um, we were going to proceed to the next level so now we need to do this in inside circle so why not going here again and duplicating this one so right click on it duplicate and we're going to press control T again hold shift and alt let's drag it drag it inward and we do have our third uh, circle obviously this one in the uh, center has um, a gradient color applied to it there's a little bit of a black color here as well so it seems like there's actually two there are two circles on the top of each other one of them is black and there's another one on top of it with some sort of an effect on it so why don't we just do that uh, we're going to select that shape and go here make it black go to the options bar fill black and we're going to get rid of the stroke so click here and choose none all right and now we're going to do this blue circle again I'm gonna go here and duplicate the top layer you know what to make it easier I'm going to rename these a little bit so uh, the one um, in the bottom we have ellipse 1 and ellipse 2 I'm gonna leave them and the one on the top I'm gonna double click the name the label of it and change it to black circle then I'm gonna right click on it and duplicate it this one I'm going to rename it to blue circle uh, in order to be able to see uh, this one and um, differentiate it we might as well go here to the fill and change it to blue I'm just gonna choose this blue we're gonna press control T again and I'm gonna nudge it down a bit and perhaps a little bit from the left side and slightly from the right side we're gonna drag it in and press enter so okay uh, let's say we're happy with this so at this point what we need to do is to apply this gradient color to the shape so what we need to do is to sample these colors I'm gonna pick up the eyedropper you can press I that's the short shortcut uh, and I'm going to click here on the darkest blue that you see on the iTunes logo. We have it sampled here. We can take a look. I'm going to click on this switch button. Now we are moving this to the backward, so it's going to be the background color. For the foreground color, we're going to pick up the eye eyedropper one more time, and this time I'm going to sample the brightest part, the blue, right in the center. So now I have those two blue colors the darkest and the brightest blue color that I can find on the iTunes logo now we're gonna head here to the layers panel my blue circle is selected I'm going to go to the effects and apply gradient overlay as soon as you apply that one you have the gradient applied to this it could be any color and um, but what we need is those two blue colors so we're gonna come here and click on gradient as you see the first item is going to be what you have on your toolbar so automatically it gives me this so it's wonderful but the only difference is we don't want it linear we want it radial so we're gonna change this to radial and I want it the other way around so make sure reverse is unchecked so there you have it. 
we have gradient overlay, blue color, radial form, and not reversed. We're gonna press. We're gonna press enter, or just apply this one by pressing OK. So let's go back and zoom out a little bit. You see our shape is starting to be quite similar to iTunes logo already. There are a little bit of uh, modifications you can do. For instance, um, I'm not happy with the height of this one. I'm just going to drag it up a little bit and let it go. Okay, that looks much better. And now we uh, we have a little bit of a shine here. If you see, there's a semicircle here that we actually uh, we can apply to this shape as well. Uh, but that is on on the top of the old layers because it is kind of happening here over the notes over these eight notes as well. So that's what we're gonna do at the end. But um, in order to have a uh, note here, I'm gonna head to custom shape tools. So let's go choose custom shape tool from the toolbar. Then we're going to head here to the options bar. And I'm going to go choose the eight note that we have here. Let's click and drag. All right. It's not as thick as the one in iTunes logo, but we understand how that works. That's a trademark. Uh, you know logo they drew this one and they did not grab it from uh, Photoshop default shapes so at this point we're just gonna uh, be happy with this one and um, go forward see what else we can do so what we need to do here we need to apply gradient color to it as well so I'm going to pick up the eyedropper tool and this time I'm gonna pick up the um, or click on the darkest part of the uh, music note here and then we're gonna switch click on this double headed arrow and then click on the brightest part the part of the gray color here then we're gonna go to the layers panel I'm gonna rename this shape one to music note and we're going to apply um, effects to it so in order to do that, we're going to go to FX and click on Gradient Overlay. Again, we're going to go here under Gradients and modify this. I'm going to go for the first shape. There you have it. And this time, we're going to go for Linear. So there you go gradient color linear and we're going to press OK alright so starting to look quite similar to the iTunes logo already we see there's a there's kind of a glow around this um, eight note on iTunes logo so what we can do here is as a matter of fact go to effects and add that glow to it as well so we're gonna go back to the effects here and this time we're going to click on outer glow um, we're going to need color white so let's click on this shape here and go for white press OK um, this is a little bit too intense so what I'm going to do is to bring down the spread a little bit And um, these are the numbers I have. You can play around with with it and find what find whatever you like. I have 70 for opacity and 26 for spread and 8 for size. I'm happy with this one. I'm going to press OK. As you see, it's starting to look quite similar to iTunes logo. Um, I see there's a little bit of bevel and emboss going here as well. So why not? We just apply that one and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go to effects one more time and this time I'm going to go for bevel and emboss. Um, you can play around with these sliders and come up with whatever you like. Um, 
I'm going to stick to a very small size of 2 pixels. So all I did is I just dragged the slider to get size number 2. I have depth of 324 and I'm going to press OK. OK, we have these logos quite similar. Uh, what's happening here, I see a drop shadow behind the whole thing as well. So why not apply that one too? We're going to go to Layers panel and this time we're going to go down and select the first circle that we drew and then we're going to go to Effects one more time here and go for Drop Shadow. As you see there's a uh, Drop Shadow applied to it already. Um, we're going to play around with the sliders. Um, I'm going to drag down the opacity uh, to a number perhaps to 20 and um, maybe I play around with distance a little bit. I'm going to make it 6 and size I'm going to stay with 10. So these are the numbers I have. Again uh, this is not written in stone. You can play around and find your own numbers. I'm going to press OK and as you see these are getting closer and closer. Um, there, the only thing that is left here is this semi-sphere or semi-circle that we have here. So let's go play around with that. Obviously we do need a circle that is exactly the same size of the blue circle. So why not uh, we go here and duplicate that one. So I'm going to go over the blue circle, right click on it, duplicate. Uh, we have a second uh, copy of it right now and uh, we do not need the effect anymore so what we can do is click on the effect and drag it to the garbage bin so again here and this one I'm going to double click on it and call it shine uh, might as well we go to the shape tool and then change the color to white and also you can bring down the opacity of it on layers panel I'm gonna go to 20 or maybe 30 okay um, starting to be quite similar but the problem is this is a whole circle we only need half of it so in order to do that I'm going to go to the ellipse tool I can draw over this one or I can there are so many different things you can do with this as a matter of fact you can mask some part of this one you can uh, combine shapes and so forth there are so many different ways of doing it what I'm gonna do here I'm going to go to options bar uh, you can select intersect shape areas and then you can click and drag and that will just keep the intersected part between the um, layer underneath and the layer that you just drawing. This is the simplest form and um, I would like to stay with this one. Um, as you see these two shapes are quite similar. Uh, obviously if the note, the music note we have here was thicker and wider that would be quite similar to this and um, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Thank you for watching.